Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I am Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I can say welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, interact with my subscribers and returning subscribers. Thank you for keeping with me, and new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Today I wanted to talk about the financial impact on each and every one of us due to the lockdown and, you know, ways what the government says they're offering, um, how to get it. Well, how they say you can get it is probably more to the truth. And yes, so that is where I'm coming from now. Just remember that if you go to your creditors, your mortgage lenders, and any one of these people that you owe money to, your utilities, and say you haven't got any money and... Um, What's the word you you say? Ask for help. Oh yeah, if you say if you ask for help due to loss of income, they're not obliged to help you. They can't say, "Oh, you have got to say." However, if you say that um, I have no income due to the coronavirus, the coronavirus will trigger new policies, and they'll be able to defer payments and cancel late fees. Let me know if it works. I've just had that information that you need to say that your loss of income is due to the coronavirus. If you don't just go there and say, listen, I ain't got no money and expect them to take it for granted that they know it's because of the coronavirus, you won't get a cent. You won't get no leeway. You won't get a break. However, you have to be specific. Okay, I've got that out of the way. I wanted to say that up front. So, um, how are you going to manage financially during this lockdown? Um, the government claimed that they can ensure people get income by setting statutory sick pay at £180 a week and extending the SSP, that's the statutory sick pay, below the lower earnings limit. Extending SSP to people who have been recently laid off are taking unpaid dependents leave or are socially distancing following government advice. So that's what will entitle you. This maintains the link with the employer and is the most straightforward route to provide financial support for these varied circumstances. Uh, using the benefit system to keep people enhanced financial support include Speeding up payments in universal credit. Well, we know that the universal credit have a terrible reputation for dragging their feet. I still understand it's still not going to be any quicker than five weeks. So um, that is the reality. So either by turning advance payments into grants, that would mean that you wouldn't have to pay it back. At the moment, when they give you an advance payment, you have to pay it back. So what they're thinking about, I don't think it's written in stone yet, is that they give you a grant so you don't have to pay it back. Um, and there will be guaranteed, and they will, or advance payment loans will be guaranteed on generous repayment terms. I guess you hardly have to pay anything back, but the grants would be better and I don't know who would qualify for a grant and who would qualify for a loan. It's not clear. They're setting the standard allowance for a single person at the crisis minimum or making the work allow allowance available to all claimants, not just those with the responsibility for children or limited cap capability work to work. They're pausing natural migration to universal credit during this period. So everybody was supposed to move over, remember? but that's not happening, and they're making similar adjustments across the benefit system to ensure people are paid the crisis minimum income. I don't know what that is, actually. But just look it up, crisis minimum income, and see how much that is worth. Those affected by the coronavirus are meant to be able to apply for universal credit and can receive up to a month's advance without physically attending the job centre. That's really no different from what they're offering anyway. You can, you know, you've always been able to get a month advance, and that's the same month advance that they're talking about. It might be a grant or it might be a loan. 
Um, no one has to physically attend DWP, the Department of Work and Pensions. While the coronavirus outbreak is going on, everyone is being urged to use online facilities. So hopefully you're all set up or you should get set up. The only problem with that is with the online facility is that if you don't have a passport or a credit card or a debit card or a driving license, it's going to be very, very difficult because it's going to mean that you have to go to the Department of Work and Pensions physically. Um, you will need, but make sure if that is the case, that you have a letter with your appointment date on it and the time when you're going there. OK. Okay, you will need to comply with their texts and their emails to get paid. So if you don't respond to their texts or their emails, you won't get paid. So make sure you check your emails and texts and follow their guidelines. Um, vulnerable claimants who cannot access Department of Work and Pension Services by any other channels. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know if it means whether or not they can't access it online or be invited to attend, but I'm not quite sure what other channels are. All health assessments have been postponed. Oh, an MOT has been postponed for six months. It's been suspended for six months. So if, you, if your car's due for MOT, you don't need to um, renew it at this time while all of this is going on. A part of the universal online credit process is to prove your identity. I've already said that. Um, claimants, they're meant to go to the job centre, which is at, at odds with government guidance for those people who um, need to go physically, but I'm sure they'll stagger them. So there's not more than one person or two persons invited to attend at the same time, which probably means there'll be a long waiting time. Rent breaks. Well, it's fine giving the tenants a break from the rent, but that's putting pressure on the landlords. Um, businesses are unpa unable to pay rent and buy to let landlords are struggling when their tenants are out of work because of impact of the pandemic and unable to pay the rent. The government is suggesting that landlords freeze rent for three months, which has huge ramifications for landlords. Is the government teaching buy to let landlords a lesson? The aspiring working class who have obtained relative comfort through buy to let will be brought down to their knees if they can't keep up the mortgage repayments. But technically, the more the, the banks are supposed to give a mortgage freeze for three months. So hopefully that is in place. Um, like I said in a previous video, I don't know it's for whether it's for repayment or interest only, whether it's blanket. I'm not sure. Landlords are struggling with debt repayments, mortgage costs, rent. Mortgage is usually paid on the first of the month, which we are approaching soon, and they are stressed. So I'd be very interested to know. Please email blackwhitenews at protonmail.com if you've experienced uh, applying for a mortgage freeze, just to let me know if it works. So house prices could also drop. So landlords who have remortgaged may find themselves in a position where their repayments are more than the value of the property. And what are they meant to do? So if the banks provide a mortgage freeze, that will help and it will definitely help reduce the stress. On the 17th of March, the Chancellor announced an unprecedented package of government-backed and guaranteed loans to support businesses, making available at an initial 330 billion of guarantees, equivalent to 15% of the GDP. So this is if you've got a small or medium sized business. This was on top of a series of measures announced by the Budget 2020. The government announced 30 billion of additional support for public services, individuals and businesses experiencing financial difficulties because of COVID-19, including a new 5 billion COVID-19 response fund to provide, an ex to provide any extra resources needed by the NHS and other public services to tackle the virus. I wonder where all this money is coming from. Probably from the pension pot. 
the government will take new legal powers in the COVID-19 bill, enabling it to offer whatever further financial support it thinks necessary to support businesses. However, it sounds good on paper, but in actuality, it's causing concerns. Petitions are currently in place to encourage lenders and landlords and utilities to freeze payments during lockdown requesting the government to work with mortgage providers, landlords and utility companies to freeze rent, mortgage and utility bill payments. That's why I'm not sure if it's actually in place or whether they're talking about putting it in place. And it should be available to everybody working during that period, whether their workplace has been closed or they have been told to stay home to look after children. So I don't know. So if any of you have tested it out, and you know, please let me know. Um, people are unable to work for various reasons and people should not have to worry how rent and mortgage is being paid for a situation that is not their fault. So that's the petition that's going around. Um, and if you just put in petition, read COVID-19, it will come up if you're interested in signing it. I think they've got quite a few signatures. Um, if it's in everyone's best interest that people should stay at home, then support should be offered to allow people to do so. Statutory sick pay does not cover most people's rent and many people do not have savings. And if these people are not supported, they risk forcing them onto the streets to goodness knows what. The um, let me see. Um, the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme is offering loans of up to five million for small and medium sized enterprises. That's called SMEs through the British Business Bank. But loans are not really good at this time. It's just making them more vulnerable because they're going to have to worry about paying it back. And especially when, you know, um, you're not really getting the custom, are you? So it's fine giving them loans to pay off rents and stuff like that. But if the, if the business isn't coming in, they're going to end up with a loan and no business to cover the outgoing, so the outlay. So a new lending facility from the Bank of England to help support li liquidity among larger firms, helping them bridge co coronavirus disruption to their cash flows through loans. So um, a 12 month business rate holiday for retail, hospitality and leisure businesses in England. Shouldn't be business rates. It should be no rates. What the government needs to do in this situation is to suspend all of the stuff like this. Mortgages, utilities and all of that so that people can get on with their lives and deal with the situation. Because on the one hand, they're saying they're offering support, but in reality, they're giving them loans to get through. And while I guess it's good to have a bit, bit of money, it does mean that after the crisis is over, you're going to have to pay it all back. That might work for some people. But I'm sure for a lot of people who... Are, um, who got no guaranteed income coming in, it could be seen as even a more stressful. So I guess that's up to the individual. If, at least I guess the money is there if they need it. They have a job retention scheme. I think that is pretty good. Um, that means that some kind of guarantee that you have your job after all this is over. I assume that's what that means. There's a deferral of VAT and income tax. Um, there's statutory sick pay, which we mentioned before, uh, for small business, for small and business enterprises. There's a small business grant funding of 10,000 for all businesses in receipt of small business rate relief or rural rates relief. There's grant funding of 25,000 for retail, hospitality and leisure businesses with property with rateable value between 15,000 and 51,000 and there's an HMRC time to pay scheme. So, you know, this might be useful for some small businesses, this information. The case for a crisis minimum income, citizens advice um, helps people manage financial difficulties every day. 
Large, last year they helped 380,000 people with debt problems. I'm not quite sure how they do that. I think what they do is they write to the debtor and give you time to pay. I think that's what they do. But they're closed. And I'm not quite, quite sure if um, the telephone service is going to be effective. It might be because I guess technically they could get you to call them and then they could call the debtor on your behalf. And everything would have to be done by email, I'd imagine. So many people will not be able to go to work and will lose the ability to provide for themselves and their families. Introducing a three-month council tax holiday where people cannot afford to make payments. Um, that is what they're meant to be doing. That will also be helpful. But once again, it's not a blanket. And I don't see how people, um, how long it's going to take. I bet you it's got something to do with applying for universal credit. And if you apply for universal credit, you get that, um, you get a council tax holiday. So it's going to be a long procedure. But I guess you'll be covered if you apply for universal credit. I, I, I don't know. I just think that's the only way that they can really regularise it or monitor it. Because otherwise, if they weren't going to do it that way, they would have just said blanket. Nobody has to pay council tax for the next three months. So they have to know not everybody's going to be writing in and saying, I've lost my job. Am I entitled to three months council tax reprieve? So it has to be for those people on universal credit who applied because of the coronavirus who will get three months tax holiday? Well, that's I'm trying to think rationally. I'm trying to think how else can they work it out? Um, there is financial support for artists, creative practitioners and freelancers. The Arts Council are making 20 million available to individuals working in the cultural sector, including artists, creative practitioners and freelancers. But there's always a snag. Uh, they should have a track record in applying for something similar in the past. But I would not let that stop you. If you come up with a good enough plan, you may get a grant. I remember, um, how many years ago is it? 2014, I applied for a grant for a human trafficking conference. And I got it. It was the first time I'd ever applied for a grant. First time. Did I apply? Did I do the work? No, I think somebody did it for me, actually. No, I have to take that back. I didn't apply for it. Somebody did it for me. Somebody completed the application form for me. Yeah, and I had to pay them something out of the grant. So, yeah, that's how that worked. But it was, I didn't have a background of what, applying for a grant and I didn't have any history of it. So you just never know. Don't let, you know, if you don't try, you'll never know, will you? So um, artists and creative practitioners will be able to apply for grants for up to 2,500 if they have a track record in publicly funded culture. So I wouldn't let that deter you. That's all I'm saying. I mean, now, particularly now, you might even feel more creative. You might have come up with some inventive ideas, creative ideas, especially to do with the situation now. So, you know, just think how, what kind of ideas. So that's um, Arts Council of England. They've got a massive website. And, you know, just look through it and see what you feel you can apply for. Um, we understand the impact of the COVID-19 crisis is having on all parts of the cultural workforce. So they're looking to provide 4 million from this 20 million budget for grants to benevolent, to benevolent funds targeted at other cultural workers. More information on that will be shared soon. So like I said, check their website. Who is eligible to apply for the fund? Well, creative practitioners whose main work is focused on music, theatre, dance, visual arts, literature, 
combined, combined arts and museum practice. The work includes choreographers, writers, translators, producers, editors, freelance, educators in the disciplines and art forms. They support composers, directors, designers, artists, craft makers and curators. I don't know how many of you fall into that category, but like I said, check the Art of England Arts of England website. Arts Council England. Arts Council England. Check their website. You never know. This is the time to be creative. Um, magicians, comedians can apply for the fund as long as they have a track record of receiving public funding for their work. So, Arts Council England are also exploring reasonable adjustments that will ensure applicants with access requirements have an equal chance of benefiting from this fund. This would also include anyone ill due to COVID-19. Guidance for applications, including the detailed timetable for the fund, should be released on the 30th of March. But there's a quick turnaround. Potential applicants will need to register on their application portal, Grantium, G-R-A-N-T-I-M, by Friday the 3rd of April. Okay, so that is in a matter of a couple of weeks. Really quick turnaround. There will be support for people to do this. Funding has come from reallocation of nat national lottery project grants, developing your creative practice and their development funds for 2020 to 21 period and uses up most of all of the reserves. So what's happening to the self-employed? According to www.parliament.co.uk, Edward Davy MP was asking about financial support for the self-employed in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are 5 million self-employed people in the UK, generating about 300 billion for the economy. However, whilst the government made an announcement to subsidise the wages of direct employees, a support package for self-employed workers has, has still not been announced. So there's nothing firm being offered to self-employed people at the moment. Stephen Barclay MP told the House that the government knows many self-employed people are in distress, but that they are working urgently to address this problem. He added, I say to the self-employed, we have not forgotten you. Help is coming. Help is coming, but when, they will be asking. There is a possibility of a new scheme for the self-employed, but we do not know what it is which is exacerbating the stress of 5 million self-employed people across the country. The government needs to move as fast as possible to meet their concerns because they are literally running out of money. 80% of the 5 million of self-employed are sole traders. The vast majority are not wealthy people. They are taxi drivers, plumbers, hairdressers, musicians, tutors, journalists, builders, electricians, construction people, childminders, painters and decorators and all key workers. So if I hear anything about the plans or anything sounds a bit firmer, I'll keep you updated on that. But for now, that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.